Walsh running the Irish green, and look at the move, he's making down to the inside. He moves to the from fifth all the way to the lead in lap one. Walsh takes win number two. Peter, 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 Walsh. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines! Well, what does everybody think of Bahrain Formula One Grand Prix? Can you believe we're actually back this time of the year again already, guys? Jesus. How the time is flying in March already. We'll be lighting up those Christmas trees before you know it. Guys, interesting Grand Prix. Now, a lot of people saying, oh, it's really boring, man. But there's a lot of gossip to talk about. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, there is. Yes, fair enough. It was a dominant, dominant performance by Verstappen and Red Bull. I mean, Jesus Christ. Sure, let, let me just have a look at the... Uh, before we get into qualifying, guys. I mean, he had a... Let me just... I'm looking at my notes here, guys. Bear with me. I'm always jotting down. Like, even at lap 22, he had an eight and a half second lead. Lap 22? Jesus! And that's that, that's not including the pit stop, you know, like the 20 seconds they kind of roughly... That they roughly estimate for the pit stops, right? That ex Excluding that. I mean, it was unbelievable performance by Red Bull. Now, let's look at the qualifying. Okay, so... Before qualifying... This is starting to drive me fucking nuts, guys. I mean, it really is driving me fucking up the wall. Even the English journalists are on top of Christian Horner. Christian Horner's English. He's got his own people, his own country, up putting him into a fucking corner. Just And they just won't fucking leave it go. What is wrong with you, Sky Sports? Seriously, I tell you, you sold yourself to the devil years ago anyway. And in fairness, you do have some good coverage. Yes, you do. David Croft, very entertaining, I have to say. I think he's very, very good. I really rate him. But Jesus Christ, let it go, guys. Like, I've been talking about Christian Horner's... And, by the way, <laughs> typical, here I am talking about it. But it's, <laughs> but it's annoying me, guys, right? The fucking guy, I was never... A big fan of Christian Horner's ever. Now I'm a big fan. I'm fucking. T I'm team fucking Christian Horner now. Uh, my heart goes out to this man. I swear to God, he's handled beautifully with his what quote? Uh, what was it? Disrespectful behavior or some shit? In fact, who cares? Or inappropriate behavior? That's what they called it. And then they still go on about it. And he was even cleared at the weekend, guys. He was 100% cleared. And yet, what do the Sky Sports people do? They bring it up and they keep hounding Christian Horner for answers. <sighs> I just hope they've got another petty little corner now and they'll get on with proper, proper fucking news. Real, legit news. Unbelievable, man. Just let the man off. I wasn't even his biggest fan. Now I love the guy. Jesus, and he's so calm and cool with it all, in fairness, guys. Because what really annoys me, if he actually did it, I would be anti-Christian Horner right now, okay? I would be cutting him into two on the podcast. But the thing is, not one shred of evidence, nothing, right? Like, zero percent, we're not even talking zero. Websites that you can go onto, and you can create and start a chat and take screenshots of a, a, a thread message between you and whoever else. So, for instance, let's say your best friend, right? He's out playing soccer, okay, and he's got a photo of himself hitting the ball, all right, Head, heading the ball. Let's say you can take his photo. Save it on your phone or your computer, and you can put it right into a, like I said, message thread, quote, message thread, 
and having an imaginary conversation and it looks like he's actually saying to you that stuff. I mean, it's... And people use this shit, guys, against other people. So I wouldn't believe for one goddamn second that all this stuff is, is real. And here's another reason why as well. The moment Christian Horner was cleared, 100% cleared, all of a sudden, guess what comes out? And where was this like a week ago? Where was this two weeks ago? This message thing. But all of a sudden, convenient, isn't it? All of a sudden, he's cleared and bang, another hit story hits. Oh, were they waiting for the right timing? Yeah, 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 whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Total horseshit, guys. Christian Horner, he's an innocent guy, I can tell you now. And do you know what? He's enough of an asshole to know that he's actually a nice guy <laughs> or an a innocent guy. Yeah, because it's the guys that pretend to be nice, squeaky clean, nice people. They're the, they're the guys that you got to watch out for. Anyway, let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Enough. We're done talking about this. Finito. We're done. God bless you, Christian Horner, and I hope you and your family are going to be okay. God bless. So, guys, where do we begin? Total Wolf and Zach Brown getting involved with the F1 need, needs to review the whole thing. Okay, we're kind of still talking about it again. No, fuck it. Toto, Toto Wolf and Zach Brown got involved with this whole Christian Horner thing. And shame on you, boys. Shame on fucking you. You're going off something, something that has no evidence. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I can't let it go, can I? Christ alive. Anyway, okay. Qualifying, guys. Let's have a look. So it was interesting. I liked that Ferrari went out very, very soon. I was very shocked to see that, guys, because, you know, normally in practice, you want some of the, let's say, the slower cars to lay down some rubber on the track for you. Therefore, your, your lap is going to be better, okay? So the more rubber that gets laid down, the more grip, technically, and technically, you should have more grip, and you'll be faster around the track. So it was very strange to see that, I have to say. Now, what that tells me is that Ferrari have too much fucking grip. And it makes a lot of sense. Because it's the total opposite of what you normally would go with, guys. It's the complete opposite. You're looking for grip. You're waiting, waiting, waiting until the last minute. And they went out instantly. That tells me a lot. They're struggling with too much fucking grip. The car is very stiff. I can see that. But I certainly didn't, uh, I didn't predict this was going to happen with their, with their car. But definitely, these guys have way too much grip. And that's what's happening in the race too. Their race pace, as we all know, they're struggling in 23. And, well, we'll get into the race now in a minute. But they're still struggling with that. Just too much grip. So how are they going to do it? They're going to have to try... Sorry, I'm just taking some water here. I'm a little bit hungover today. And they're going to have to try. And what are they going to have to do? They're going to really have to try and work on the mechanical grip. And get rid of the downforce. And you see, that's another reason why they're so quick down the straight as well, guys. Because they can afford to lose the wing, the front and back wing. Because they have so much mechanical grip. I'd rather have this complaint, let me tell you, I'd rather have this complaint than, than, than having no grip. It's definitely, they're on the better side of it, that's for sure. How can they fix that? Tighter springs, sharpen up the bump and rebound, right? Whereas you don't have an, a lot of flex, they can definitely do that. The springs is the core of the, it's the beating heart now of their mechanical grip. That's what they need to do. And the roll bars are probably stiff as fuck, as stiff as they can be. Less downforce, of course. And tracking, too, really. Like, toe in, toe out. He'd be working on those sort of things. But, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of freaky because they've had a year already, guys, under uh, Vassar. Vassar? Yeah, Fred Vassar. And 
they haven't got this problem sorted. Like they should know, they should have identified their problem already and working on fixing it. Now, you'd think they would, right? Right? You'd think they would. But it, they're not making any leaps and bounds here. And there's not huge rule changes here, guys, this year. So, if anything, they should be right on the fucking tail, or, if not, edging ahead of Red Bull. And they're not. I mean, Jesus. Well, we'll, we'll get into whoever got it on pole there in a minute. But I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, guys. I, it, it's a very strange one. There's no doubt about it. It is a very, very strange one. Well, hopefully, because I'm a fan of Ferrari, and a lot of people are, so hopefully they can, hopefully they can get it sorted. So, it was interesting, like, guys, as in roughly the same guys are up there. Lance Stroll, too. It was good to see Lance Stroll actually up there. I, I do rate him. I like him. And... He was kind of getting stuck in. He's getting the car underneath him, which is great. I think they've got a bit more work to go. Bahrain is still early to call, guys, in terms of how we're going to know if anybody's going to be that quick this year. I mean, if, we, if you look back last year, there was people quick in Bahrain. There was people quick in Singapore. But then they'd go somewhere else, and they'd be fucking nowhere, right? Alonso very quick in Monaco last year, and then he was struggling every now and then at di different tracks. So they really have got to work on the balance. Like I've, I've been saying that like a broken record, like a broken record last year with this. They've got to get the balance right and sorted overall because there's no sense. I mean, it's kind of like Ferrari, right? You can put it on pole position, but where are you going to be in the fucking race? You know? And hopefully we're going to have some wild... Uh, results this year but it's looking good for Red Bull right now it's looking good isn't it and I mean let's just go straight to to qualifying qualifying Verstappen puts two two and a half tenths on pole guys some of you you may or may not know two and a half tenths I mean in fairness you know if, if you just kind of hear it it doesn't sound much but it's everything it's goddamn everything two and a half tenths you would come in, I mean, guys, I can't remember the amount of times I've come off the track when I was racing in carts or cars, and all of a sudden you hear your second quickest, okay? And you're like, oh, okay, well, at least I'm kind of up there. And then you ask the dreaded question, well, how far off the pace am I? Two and a half tenths. Your heart sinks to the floor. It, I mean, <laughs> it's almost like you've been told you're, you're fucking last on the grid. It's... It's a horrible, horrific feeling. Even two and a half tenths. You're like, oh my God. Oh my God. Because that's what Ferrari need. That's what Aston Martin need. Well, Aston Martin need more than 1%. Ferrari need that one little tiny, tiny percentage, right? And now, and it does sound like nothing. Two and a half tenths, it sounds nothing. But it's everything. And Ferrari need that 1% as well. It's everything. Aston Martin are the same. McLaren are the same. They need McLaren... 1% to 2%. Ferrari, they just need that 1%. They're, they're, they're so close. But hey, so close can mean so so little too. So fucking little. But hey, it's not over. It's still early, guys. And that's what I do kind of have a bit of a breath of fresh air with Bahrain. Because again, the car can behave in weird scenarios around that track. But yet they can be... Very good at the different tracks. Now, Jetta coming up next weekend. S high speed. I think Ferraris are going to be exceptional. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into that in the next, uh, in the next podcast on, on Friday. The preview. Now, Russell qualifies three, huh? Wow. Is he the new golden boy now? I know I was having a, a, a go off uh, Hamilton there a few days ago. Is he going to be the golden boy now? I think he is. I think he is. And you saw the way Hamilton was quickest in practice. Was it practice one? Practice two? Uh, I was just kind of briefly paying attention to that, guys. I think it's practice one. And 
he was quickest and you're like, oh, whoa, fucking hell, okay. Even I was saying, geez, maybe I'm wrong, so on the, on Toto Wolf looking after him or not looking after him. But then all of a sudden the race, like guys, I am no Hamilton fan here, but I'm going to bat for him here on this one. There is no way George Russell is that good and he's improved that much to beat Hamilton here. All right. And I rate, I rate Russell too. So this isn't me having to go off any of the drivers here at all. Not one second. But Hamilton is no way that fucking slow than Russell. They're, they're just not giving Hamilton the attention. And quite honestly, I don't blame them. After that bombshell he dropped about going to Ferrari next year, I mean, it was such a kick in the balls, guys. And I look, I know you're probably thinking, Jesus, Peter, would you shut up about this? I know I'm going on and on about it. But I just, I just don't, I hate that. The disrespect he showed to his team after winning five world championships in a row. He wouldn't have those championships if it wasn't for Mercedes. And now he just comes in and trust me, guys, as a race driver, knowing the racing world, a driver coming in at the start of the year, it's unforgivable. I mean, it, it, it really is. It's, it's unbelievable. It, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Now, you can say silly season, right? If you don't know what silly season is, the silly season would be kind of the summertime, end of the summer, right, where there's rumors that, oh, Russell's going there, Perez is going here, he's going there, da, da, right? So all sort of talks about getting, getting a new team for the driver. Now, you see, that's expected. Because, and you know why they do it? They don't do it at the start of the year because you want some good energy and spirits with your team. That's exactly what you want. So, Hamilton doing this, I'm not surprised. In fact, I was even saying, and I was kind of joking, he, Toto Wolff will have him mopping the fucking floors as the, the caretaker now in the next, at the sixth race on. <laughs> Obviously not that bad, but it's not good, guys. It's not good. And just the energy, the bad blood. And even when they get, you see, here's the other thing as well, guys, that Hamilton's going to have now up against him. When he is around the team now, and all of a sudden, a new upgrade comes along. Lewis Hamilton will not be in that fucking room where all the team are discussing, where are we going with this? Is it any better? They're going to be looking for Russell's feedback. Now, they might... I, I think they'll probably listen to Hamilton's feedback on some, some parts. But then again, if you're not giving him the whole fucking car and setup... Well, you're not going to pay too much attention to them. But they certainly will be locking the door behind them, guys. Having Russell in there and Toto and the engineers and the mechanics. They'll all be in, huddled into a corner. And Hamilton will be all alone, sucking his lollipop, whatever he's fucking doing outside. He will be all alone. And you know what? Fuck him. I mean, if I did that back in my day, in my racing days, well, tough shit, Peter. Tough shit. You dropped a bombshell. You killed the spirit. The wind's out of the sail here, buddy. Well, you got to suck it up, man. And that's it. So, anyway, but I think, guys, I mean, it's still going to be interesting. Because, look, after all my conversation here, I could be fucking wrong, right? We could go to Jeddah now this weekend, and all of a sudden, Hamilton's fucking blindingly fast ahead of Russell. So... <laughs> You never know. I could be completely wrong out of all my talk. But still, guys, this is what I love about Formula 1, you know, the unpredictability. And, you know, I suppose in fairness, it has given us something to talk about. It's been a bit of gossip. As a race driver for me, it's been annoying because the disrespect and he's always going on about how grateful he is and this and that. He's so full of shit, it's unreal. So full of it. But, uh, so guys, where do we go from here? I mean... Verstappen takes the fastest lap, takes the win. Perez, a good second place by him. You can just clearly see the car is just awesome. Adrian Newey, he's the wizard behind the curtain. He has really just pulled out an, 
an immense car. Now, the good news of here, guys, writing, and in, you know, and in fairness for people watching, I can understand, like, oh, Christ, this is going to get boring, man. I 100% understand that, guys, 100%. But it's only Bahrain, okay? If this was, uh, let's say, what kind of track now would you kind of call a, a well-balanced all-round Just let me let, let me let me think about that now for a second, guys. But uh, let's see now. The car well balanced, like Houston. Uh, sorry, not Houston. Austin in Texas, and or Austin in Texas, right? Yeah, the Austin track anyway. Yeah, the Texan track. That's quite a well balanced track where you have high speed, mid speed, and low speed corners, so you can definitely get a good balance of the car at that track. So. If it was the first round, if that was in Austin right now, now I would be 100% saying, oh, Jesus Christ, guys, uh, yeah, it's, all, it's over. <laughs> it's all over. Pack your bags. He's sailing off into the sunset for a fourth world championship. Bahrain just gives that little doubt, question mark. There's some high speed. Well, this was not really high, high speed. There's high speed-ish, I suppose. Medium to high speed corners at Bahrain. There's low speed. You need a good balance. It just no, it it just doesn't give it the old Pepsi challenge yet. So we'll see now this weekend, and I think it's going to be very interesting, guys, because I think Ferrari now are going to be very quick at Jeddah. I think they're going to be, they'll probably put it on pole. I w I can imagine. Now, then again, guys, all my predictions last year, Jesus Christ, I couldn't get ten percent of them right. <laughs> Which is still great, though, because, Christ, if we could predict every race, how fucking boring would that be? You know? So, it, it's good that way. And I think, where does Mercedes go from here? Again, we're back to Mercedes and Toto and Lewis and Russell. I think Mercedes have picked up a bit of pace. They're definitely going to put all their energies and efforts into Russell, I would think. Okay, look, and again... Like I said, I could be wrong. But I think that's exactly where they're going to go with this. And I think their overall balance of the car is definitely better. And I think that's really that's just what they needed to fix. It's not that they don't have the, the engine speed. It's just the overall balance, guys. And if it's your first time listening, the overall balance, right? Engine versus chassis. Okay, in other words, there's no point having a car that can do 210 miles an hour, excuse me, 210 miles an hour when every other car is 205. Now, you would think, oh, geez, well, that's great. We're five miles an hour quicker than everybody else, right? That's brilliant, right? You would think that, of course, uh, naturally. But the problem is, guys, if, if you're going through, if you've got a higher, uh, sorry, a faster engine than, let's say, the guy in second, problem is... Can your car handle the high-speed corners now? Because you've got a, a monster of an engine now in your car. Now, if it can't, because and I'm telling you guys, it can come down to literally one mile an hour in terms of affecting the overall performance of a car. One mile an hour. I'm not fucking joking with you here. I knew this from karting, Formula Ford, Formula 3, 2, Palmer Audi. I know it all from this. One mile an hour can fuck the whole balance of the car up. Now, in a way, a lot of the times it's actually quite good to get to that to, to get to that uh, situation, I suppose you can call it, because then you know how how sensitive your car is are you know how close you, to the limit you are on, which is a great thing. So you can work from there. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like finding the limit in a corner and going, ah, okay, I can't take this bend at 90, but I can take it at 85. If I take it at 90, I'm just going to understeer off into the fucking, or shoot straight off into the fucking chicane, or into the concrete wall, and I'm bang, crash. So it's a good thing to know where the limit is. So Mercedes, can they pull it out? I mean, look, Jesus Christ, it's Toto Wolf. He's got some blindingly good engineers, mechanics, back at the factory, and 
these guys, they're, they're awesome. If anybody could pull a, a nice surprise out of their ass, definitely you could not be surprised with Mercedes. So you never know, guys. And I think they will do well here at Jetta as well coming up. And now look, obviously we'll get into it on Friday in more detail. But I think Mercedes and and Ferrari are going to be the, the, the major teams to beat at Jetta. Now, Red Bull, I think they're going to be quick. I think they're going to be strong. But I think, like most of us know, guys, they've got their race ability, their race pace, sorry, should I say, is just, it's outstanding. It's outstanding. It's so hard to beat. Their reliability, the car just never fucking breaks. It's unbelievable. Looking forward to this year, Singapore, they're probably going to struggle. And that was the only track. It was very interesting, guys. And you see Carlos Sainz, he won there last year. Very interesting to see the fact that if they go to a very, very bumpy track, which Singapore is, and humid track, they lose all performance. I mean, didn't, didn't Verstappen, uh, I think, didn't he qualify like 11th or 12th last year? Sorry, guys, if, if I'm getting that wrong. But he was way back. Like, he was down midfield, even a little bit further than midfield last year at Singapore in qualifying. So they're going to have some of these races that they're not going to be as quick. I think... Looking forward to Jeddah. I can't wait because, guys, this is an awesome track. And you know what? Even to just even watching it on tr on TV, you can hear the 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 engine noise, the the echo of the engine, and it's just it makes everything louder. It's awesome, guys. So if you've never watched the Jeddah Saudi Arabian track, watch it this weekend, guys, and we'll come out with our preview on Friday. So let's have a look there, guys. At before we we close this off today. And let's have a look there now. Uh, results. We're gonna get take out the old uh, the points here now, guys, and we'll, we're gonna show you who is where and who is who. So the driver's standing. So Maxi Boy, Maxi Boy takes 26 points. So he gets the fastest lap and the win. Sergio on 18. Carlos in third on 15 points. Charles Leclerc on 12, Russell in 5th, we could see the way Russell got up to 2nd yesterday uh, in the race, guys, he had a good race in fairness to him yesterday, it was, it was very good, it was very good in fairness, he did the best he could get out of that car, Lando Norris in McLaren in 8 points, coming in 6th position, I was surprised, I, do you know, maybe I'm just such a McLaren fan, I had more hopes than I should have, you know. I thought McLaren would be coming out of the, the gate storming. Or, well, I was hoping, I suppose, really. I was. And I love Piastri, man. I fucking love that guy. Hamilton comes in in seventh, so he picks up six points. Piastri comes in in eighth, gets four points in the bag. Fernando in ninth with two points. And Stroll comes in tenth with one point. So it'll be definitely interesting. And I think, looking forward, <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys, excuse me. If Carlos can get a a podium, like I think for anybody here, they need to come out of the gate storming here, okay? They need to get off to an early, early lead in the championship. Now Verstappen, she's just blindingly fast. It's ridiculous. For Ferrari to have any chance, they, I mean, they, sh they need to have their car now, right? There's no sense in kind of, I mean, what McLaren did last year was amazing. Let's just clear that up, right? When they got to Silverstone, they went from back of the grid up to fucking chat sh fighting for podiums. But really, guys, to have any chance in the championship this year, Ferrari, McLaren, they need to be coming out the gate storming. Now, look, okay. First round, right, maybe your car is a bit unpredictable still. We don't know yet what's 100% on the overall outlook on what's going to happen this year. So they really need to have a good, solid result now at Jeddah this weekend. I mean, the pressure's on. The pressure's no fucking two ways about it. And even for Vassar, this is his second year now, and this guy has got to deliver the results. Is it his second year? No, third year, right? Oh, God. Sorry, guys. Brain fart. I may have just too hungover this morning. But 
this guy has got to get his shit together. Ferrari are not going to keep this guy on board, guys. I'll tell you that for, for not very long if, if this is going to keep happening. They're going to get, even if he puts it on pole position for the next, well, for every round in 2024. And if he doesn't bring a result to the table, wins to the table, Ferrari will give him the boot. There's no doubt about it. Even if he gets all poles, right? All pole positions. He doesn't get a race win. He's gone. So hopefully for Ferrari, and I tell you guys, even at the start of the year, you know, not, not necessarily pressure's on, but all the pressure's on Ferrari. All of it is. And th th their back is up against the wall, guys, I can tell you that. So that's our Bahrain, guys. I hope, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some more entertainment at racing at this weekend. And hopefully it's just good racing. And guys, this is what I love about Jeddah. I'll close with this. A lot of accidents happen in Jeddah. Now, when I say that, touch wood, I hope nobody gets hurt this weekend at Jeddah. It is good racing, though. Because one slight mistake from any of the drivers, they're in a concrete wall. And it's a very high-speed track. So, yeah. It's going to be exciting. And there's going to be a lot of red, uh, red, red races. Yellow flags coming out, I think, for this one. A lot of safety cars. Uh, for the last few years, it has been safety cars <laughs> fucking by the mother load. So I think it's going to be highly entertaining. So, guys, that's it. Welcome back to Formula 1 24 season. And we will be back this Friday, guys, with the preview for Jetta. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Walsh running the Irish green, and look at the move, he's making down to the inside. He moves to the front with the fifth all the way to the lead in lap one. Walsh takes win number two. Peter. 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 Walsh. 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 Walsh.